This is a response to the P.P. Simmons video, Evolution's Forbidden Words, Random Chance Unpredictable Accident. Well, Carl, I'm back again, and if you think I'm picking on you, you might just be right. You're one of the most dishonest creationists on YouTube, as evidenced by the fact that you keep repeating the same lies in video after video instead of materially addressing the refutations that have been provided. And as long as you keep doing that, I'm going to keep calling you on your bull. This time you've decided to build your house of cards using childishly feeble word games, so before I start blowing it down, let's see how you began your video so we can get a taste of what's in store for us. The hypocrisy of evolution is amazing. Is it really, Carl? You do realize that evolution is a rational conceptual framework formulated by scientists to explain the diversity of life on Earth and the mountain of physical evidence uncovered in fields as diverse as paleontology, molecular biology, biogeography, biochemistry, genetics and taxonomy, don't you? It certainly isn't an animate being, let alone a sentient one, and so can hardly be accused of hypocrisy any more than it can of not flushing the toilet or calling you an arrogant prick. You may not realize this, Carl, but selecting the right words and the order in which you use them is critical in formulating a lucid and compelling argument. As it is, you've just demonstrated that your grasp of the English language is about as tenuous as your grasp of modern science and of reality. It seems that whenever we make a video about evolution in which we use the words random, accidental, chance, or unpredictable, we get a barrage of comments and postings from evolutionists telling us how ignorant we are and how those words don't even come close to describing the purported process of evolution. Well, Mr. Evolutionist, you simply can't have it both ways. We can easily expose your hypocrisy. You may think you can easily expose this imagined hypocrisy, Carl, but thinking and doing are two very different things, and we'll soon find out that the only thing you end up exposing in this video is your willingness to attack anything that calls your beliefs into question with any kind of slander you can lay your hands on. It's telling that you only mention that this barrage of comments and postings accuses you of ignorance. While I wholeheartedly agree with this statement, it's interesting that you neglected to mention that a significant number of those postings also tell you what a lying little pisspot you are. Perhaps you omitted these accusations of dishonesty from your video, lest some of your more innocent viewers begin to wonder whether they should continue to blindly accept every word that you're spouting, or whether at least to start questioning your veracity. If they ever did, then perhaps they might also wonder why you never address these accusations of base sophistry, especially since you're such an upstanding Christian. Now that would make life interesting for you, wouldn't it, Carl? Of course, anyone with even a sixth grader's understanding of evolutionary theory and without a mind shackled by Bronze Age mythologies would be able to tell you that these words don't even come close to describing the process of evolution because they only describe specific aspects of the process and not the entire process itself. This is an important distinction that you're either unwilling or unable to grasp and I'll elaborate on it later as I address your miserably facile arguments. Now in the remainder of your video you delicately dissect with the skill of an epileptic surgeon with a chainsaw a layman's web interview with evolutionary biologist Doug Fatuma. I do have to give you credit for actually posting a link to the article in question and for stating that Fatuma accepts the validity of evolutionary theory. However, you also use these two facts as evidence to claim that you aren't quote mining. And in all fairness, Carl, you may not have thought that you were, but I'll show you in a minute that you're wrong and perhaps that you're just not quite bright enough to realize it. In Holy Hallucination 17, I mentioned that I wasn't sure whether you were genuinely stupid or merely deluded, but based on this latest evidence, I think I'm starting to lean in one direction. Again, I'll demonstrate this later, but first let's see what your incisive mind has to say about the subject of natural selection. Question number one. What is natural selection and how is it central to the theory of evolution? Dr. Fatuma's answer. Natural selection is the process by which species adapt to their environment. Natural selection leads to evolutionary change when individuals with certain characteristics have a greater survival or reproductive rate than other individuals in a population and pass on these inheritable genetic characteristics to their offspring. Well, this statement is scientifically and biblically accurate. And he is right, without knowing it, that this built-in genetic transference capability certainly does explain design as well as the common sense conclusion that a design has an intelligent designer by definition. 
It may seem like a common sense conclusion to you, Carl, but the history of science has repeatedly shown us that common sense has little to do with reality. Matter, which common sense tells us is solid and substantial, is really made almost entirely of empty space. Gravity, which common sense tells us is why apples fall to the ground, is really a manifestation of the warping of space and time by matter. Light, which common sense tells us is a wave, and the electron, which common sense tells us is a particle, are both actually waves and particles. And epilepsy, which common sense once told us was caused by demons holding rave parties in our heads, is actually the result of electric storms raging across the synapses of the human brain. Your common sense, Carl, has its place in the everyday monotony of human life. It's useful for telling you not to jump over that cliff, not to poke that lion with a stick, and not to eat the yellow snow. But it has no place in science which builds models on the world based on the evidence we observe and obtain, and not on what we expect based on our personal biases and proclivities. Your seemingly sincere belief that common sense has any place in the enterprise of gathering knowledge of the intricate and sometimes baffling phenomena of nature betrays a breathtaking shallowness of thought that simply beggars belief. I sincerely hope that one day you'll grow up and be allowed to play in the deep end. Now to change the subject, I'd like to thank you for verifying that Dr. Fatuma's brief description of natural selection is scientifically accurate. The next time I need a dishonest and slimy ignoramus to confirm the fucking obvious, I'll know where to come. As for it being biblically accurate, I'd be very interested on hearing in which book to find the verses containing a treatise on population genetics. It's funny how you slipped in that lie like Kent Hovind slipping in a deduction into a tax return hoping that no one would notice. Unfortunately, I'm watching you, Carl, and you're going to have to do a lot better than that. The fact is that your book says absolutely nothing about evolutionary theory any more than it says anything about any other aspect of modern science because it was written by ignorant savages who thought that burning animal carcasses to please their barbaric god was a good idea and not simply a waste of perfectly good mutton. Your assertion that this definition of natural selection is biblically accurate therefore has all the credence of a prostitute declaring that the theory of quantum chromodynamics is karma sutrically valid. Finally, this isn't the first time I've seen you jump on the word design like a horny dog onto a vicar's leg. Evolutionary biologists use the word design informally with lay audiences to describe the adaptation of organisms to their environments or the apparent design observed in evolved replicating biological systems. They certainly don't use the word as you do to imply that these systems were consciously designed for a specific purpose by a sentient being. You certainly must know that this is the case by now, Carl, and yet you still insist on pouncing on that word every time it's used by a scientist and frottering it mercilessly until it needs dry cleaning. How very honest and sincere of you. Now, Fatuma explicitly says all of this in the final paragraph of the article where he even uses the phrase appearance of design twice, but of course, being the dishonest dipshit that you are, you completely neglect to mention this. Did you spot the quote mine yet, Carl? Okay, for the next clip, let's take a look at how you handle Dr. Fatuma's answer to the question of whether natural selection is the only mechanism of evolution. Here you are, reading his explanation of the possible fate of phenotypically neutral mutations. But once you have genetic variation, there are basically two major possibilities. First, there is simply no difference between the different genotypes or different genes in their impact on survival or reproduction. And in that case, you can have random changes of one versus the other type in a population or a species until eventually one replaces the other. That is an evolutionary change. It happens entirely by chance, by random fluctuations. Let me point out that this is an incredibly simplified account of the process of genetic drift aimed at educating the general public. Trying to refute evolutionary theory by attacking this particular passage is like trying to impugn the sophistication of the English language based on the material that was presented to you on Sesame Street. Nevertheless, you don't seem to be one to avoid a challenge, Carl, so you plow right on in regardless. Even with that aside, the only thing you succeeded in doing here is showing how handy you are with a pickaxe. In the very next paragraph, Fatuma goes on to explain exactly why another evolutionary mechanism, natural selection, is, and I quote, consistent, predictable, and dependable. If you weren't quote mining, Carl, then it would have been fair to mention this in your video rather than selectively reading from a passage that only on the surface supports your contention that evolution is a random process. Do you really think that no one would follow your link to the article, let alone read it? 
Or didn't you care because you knew that those who did would never fall for your pitiful transparent subterfuge anyway, and because your sole goal here is to deceive those who haven't learned to think for themselves yet? What that article in the established and astoundingly successful scientific theory that it's discussing in fact says is that although evolution contains random and probabilistic factors such as mutation, crossover, physical isolation and genetic drift, the overall process is far from random. Deterministic processes such as natural and sexual selection are in fact more than sufficient to mold order out of this apparent chaos. To explain this more simply to someone with your evident aversion to reason, let me make an analogy. The game of poker contains elements of random chance such as the cards dealt and the player's seating positions. Nevertheless, the same group of top players consistently win the top tournaments while the majority of the others might as well be playing roulette. Does that mean, Carl, that you'd posit that your supreme pixie has the ear of the house and owes Phil Ivy a favor or two? Or would you surmise that Phil's experience, knowledge of the odds, abilities to calculate and read faces and his nads of steel when it comes to bluffing are sufficient to override the inherent randomness of the game? Of course, I'm sure the common sense you alluded to earlier would lead you to the latter conclusion. Now isn't that ironic? Now in the final part of the video, you address Fatuma's agreement with Stephen Jay Gould's conjecture that should the evolutionary tape be rewound and replayed, the results would be very different. Let's take a look at what kind of response you managed to muster. Interesting. Listen to these words again. That just happened at the right time in the right species, in the right environment, but it need not happen that way. So there's this unpredictability. In other words, the very definition of accidentally. I'm making an assumption here, Carl, that your only exposure to the terms chaos theory and the butterfly effect have been from watching Jurassic Park and not from a mathematics class. Even systems consisting of just a few interacting parts and processes can behave extremely unpredictably following even tiny variations in their starting conditions, and that's without even introducing any random elements. If we can't predict the fate of a double pendulum, then how on earth can we predict the fate of a global ecosystem? Such a replay, of course, isn't possible in reality and is merely a thought experiment to point out the random aspects of the evolutionary process. Gould and Futuma are highlighting that under different circumstances the absolute direction of evolution would almost certainly have been different for the reasons I just outlined, but that evolution would still occur as inevitably and as inexorably as it has in the past and as it is still occurring today. Our inability to predict the future directions of the evolutionary process doesn't mean that we cannot be certain that they are occurring now and that they will continue to occur in the future. You, of course, ignore all this in your reprehensible yet inimitable style and seize only on these random aspects and dishonestly misrepresent our current evolutionary status as accidental. The fact is that past events on planet Earth did conspire to produce a species of sentient ape capable of producing both works of astonishing beauty and works of complete craptitude. And under different circumstances, we might not be fortunate enough to be here pondering on our existence. On the brighter side, we also wouldn't have to watch your crappy, dishonest videos. Random, chance, accidentally just happening at the right time, place, environment, and just the right species, unpredictable. It seems these words are only forbidden to those of us who would dispute the teaching of evolution. They certainly are not forbidden to be used by evolutionists, however. It seems their hypocrisy knows no boundaries. These words aren't forbidden to creationists, Carl, as long as they have the common decency to apply them correctly to evolutionary theory instead of using them to beat and twist it into a grotesque straw man that they can use to validate their puerile and childish beliefs. If you ever develop a conscience and a sense of decency and feel that you can make an argument against evolution without lying through your teeth, then please feel free to use them at your leisure. In the meantime, I'll keep pointing out your lies as quickly as you keep spewing them. Finally, you might want to take a little time to ponder on this. Why is it that you feel comfortable with accusing rationalists of hypocrisy when it's you who claims to have the moral high ground and the moral absolutes of your invisible friend, and yet you feel no compunction in lying like a senator caught in a brothel when it comes to attacking those who don't believe in your fables? Does the phrase double standard mean anything to you? Also, why is it that the only way you can find to defend these stories is to act like a repulsively dishonest charlatan? If you're so sure of the veracity of your position, why can't you ever find honest ways in which to defend it? 
I really hope you'll take some time to consider these points, Carl. I know thinking isn't easy, but if you try, you may actually find it quite edifying. So with all that said, I think I'll call it a day. If you're feeling a little sore, you might want to try sitting on a bucket of ice for a while until the swelling subsides a little. I'm not sure when you're planning on releasing your next anti-science video, but I'll be sure to keep my eye out for it and respond. As a result, I suggest that you might want to wait a little before posting it, at least until you're not feeling quite so tender.